All right. Welcome back. It is the Built by Vitality podcast. I am your host, Steve Pinkerton. To my right, your left, is the five foot four <laughs> killer of Manila. Yeah. Philip Lewis. Yes. Plus how, three inches. How tall are you? Five seven. Okay. Cool. Believe me, I've measured. It's barely five seven. Okay. Fair <laughs> so, enough. So I know what it is. <laughs> I was hoping I'd get six feet one day, but it never kinda like in college when all the guys are like, oh, I'm six nine and you're like six seven. Yeah. You know? like, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that. I'm six nine two seventy. I was actually 6'5", 254. But yeah, just good. round it up a little bit. Um, on today's episode, we got a good one for you. I think this is going to I'm, – I'm, I'm feeling pretty solid about this. Me too. We are going to talk about why you need to stop with the hard sell. Stop. In whatever, whatever capacity, whatever field you're using it in, if you're using it, it needs to go away. And we're going to talk about why I think that. And I would love to hear the opposite view – so I can tell you how wrong you are. Uh, should I start with why this, why this thought came to mind? Well, I think you should. But okay. before, what if you just explain to maybe somebody that's watching or listening what a hard sell is? What your yeah, what a hard sell is exactly? A hard sell would be the way that they teach in in pretty much any sales uh, platform. Let's use a car salesman. Mm-hmm. They're pushy. They're very aggressive. Uh, they're always asking and, and, and putting you in a position to where they, they – I don't know if they purposely – I would say that they, they are making you feel uncomfortable because they, they know that they can almost guilt or stress you out into making a bad decision. But it would be like at the end of a conversation, and it's clear that you are not ready to make a buying decision. Yeah that they want to pressure you into making that buying decision, uh, such as, hey, so let's sit down, let's do the paperwork, and you know, we'll get this thing going. And you're like, well, you know, I really need you know, maybe a couple more days to kind of get my finances in order. Well, don't, this deal only lasts for today. Yeah. Well, don't you want the car? Don't yeah. you want to – the car might disappear, you know, might, well, might go to somebody it. else, you know. Uh, you know, our – you came in here and your finances aren't ready. Why would you come in here if your finances yeah. aren't ready? And they start trying to talk you into it. And it's almost like they try to break you down, wear you down, to yeah. where finally you're just like, screw it, I'll take it. And a lot of people are they're so anti confrontational that they don't want they, they don't want to tell people no. So they don't want to disappoint people. So they just they, they get convinced into doing things. Yeah. And it's a really dirty, grimy uh, way to do business and in the fitness world this happens too and i'll explain to you my experience my most recent experience with this it, i was asked to be in a podcast uh by a group I, w- I won't i won't use the name of the podcast um because it was a nice guy he was a nice guy i'm sure it was a nice it's a nice group of people was i invited you were not you sense. I'm sorry. We I'm come sorry. as a team. I know. We're, we're a package deal. It's like twins. My <laughs> Dan DeVito should be with me at all times. <sighs> but the, the idea was, hey, we want to give back to gym owners. We would love to talk to you about how you've been able to be successful and how you've integrated real estate and being a landlord into um, uh, the gym world. And I said, cool. That'd be, that, that's awesome. I'd love to talk about it. I'm an I'm a open book, man. I'll, I'll be as transparent as possible. So we talked for a little bit before the podcast, and he told me what we were going to talk about, and it was all cool. It was all good stuff that I thought would be beneficial, and I think it was beneficial. So we spent about 30 minutes in the, on the, uh, uh, the, the podcast, and this podcast was a, um, a marketing arm disguised as like an outreach podcast for, you know, for, for gym owners. So what I mean by that is the podcast was being used to create business for their primary platform, which was a consulting company. And they disguised this marketing arm, which was to reach out to these business owners, make them feel like, Hey, we're going to talk to you about, you know, your gym and whatever. But in reality, they wanted to make people think it was this, you know, uh, 
philanthropic. Hey, we're we're just giving back because our business is over here. We wanted we wanted to you know offer something and give back. Mm-hmm. And it was a cool. It was kind of a cool it's thing. Clickbait. It, yeah, it made sense. Like it was like okay, cool. I get it. You've got this successful consulting company. You guys want to give back a little bit and and use some of the tools that you've uh, discovered by, by talking to all these gym owners. And, and and share that wealth of information. Cool. That's a, cool, a solid concept. We get done with the podcast, and one of the questions was, "Hey, you know, what's your, what's the goal now for Vitality? You know, what heading to this next season?" And I was like, "Man, I'll be honest. Uh, this is the first time in 13 years that I haven't had a a big project or something like looming over my head where I can look back and say." The first three years of business were a whirlwind. You're trying to start up from scratch. You have no idea what you're doing. You're trying to figure out how to make all these 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 payments and and and, and get all this this new growth. And so that three years was just there was no relaxing for the first 36 months. Then we said, okay, well, cool. We've kind of got this figured out. Let's go build a facility. So then I spent a year and a half finding a location, locking on financing. Then. At about the four-year mark, we started construction. Four and a half-year mark, we started construction. That was far from a far from Very relaxing, a, right? Yeah, <laughs> it almost cost me my marriage and everything else. I'm, I'm surprised I wasn't living in, out at your property in like a, in, a, in, a, in a double wide, uh, or I wouldn't even know. It's quite better. Than it would have been right a single now. wide. Yeah, single wide. And uh, so that was like a three-year process. Then we move into the new facility. And now I got to figure out how we're going to operate this. 50,000 square foot gym or, 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 or facility. And on top of that, we got 12 tenants to fill. Yeah. So that lasted six years. Right. It lasted, it was just when, when, when Steve moved into the jiu-jitsu place, that was the last spot that we had. That was the last headache of, you know, trying to figure out tenants and all this type of stuff. Uh, and that was, shoot, we've been there six months yeah. and we, we started when he started. So, uh, Six months ago was the first time that I kind of felt like, man, I can take a breath. I don't want to do anything else. I don't want any other projects. Yeah. Oh, and then we built the house. Mm-hmm. Uh, three year well, go- three wild. years ago, we started, and, we, and we've been in there for a year now. So I was explained like, man, I don't have the, – the goal for me is not growth right now. I'm not yeah. trying to grow anything. Let's just let's – just, Batten down the hatches a little bit, and I let's said, "Enjoy it a little bit." Yeah, let's just let's just put it on cruise control. Not take our hands off the wheel, but let's just not, you know. And 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 what I told them was, I said honestly, my staff has been been the ones that have paid the price for this because we've constantly thrown different obstacles at everybody to try and figure out. Hey, oh by the way, we're gonna do 380 PT sessions a month. And we're going to have two programs. We're going to have a boot camp program and a CrossFit program. And we're going to move locations. And we're going to do all this stuff. So every time people start to get kind of comfortable in that in that scenario, I'm looking at it from an owner's standpoint, if I'm not comfortable, I guarantee you my staff isn't mm-hmm. comfortable. They're, they're chasing things too, trying to figure out what's the new normal. Uh, so I explained to that. I said, man, these guys deserve to have a little time to where we can just, man, let's just – figure it out let's just let's just be comfortable for a little bit but i said you know i made the comment that you know now we can focus on things like retention and 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 other things that i think are are starting to be uh a little bit of a bigger player now retention's always been big but now with with covid going on and 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 kind of getting through that retention's huge we don't want to lose people and he you know he made a comment and said well you know uh i've got a guy that 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 is really good at retention, and you know we've helped a lot of people. I didn't think much of it. We get off the podcast, and he's like, "Hey, you know, would you like me to connect you with that guy I told you about? He 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 talks to people about retention, and he wanted to set up a consulting call for me. Yeah. And I'd explained to him that I I do consulting for gyms. Like that's yeah. what I do. I've been I've been do doing that. this 13 years. I'm not saying I got it all figured out, but like. He Pick up the to, context clues there, yeah. Junior. Like, figure he wanted the, you to call yourself. Yeah. And I'm not saying I don't need a mentor. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is people people get in this mindset of they, they, they want to try and push this sale, and yeah. they don't, they're not listening to logical uh, context clues that are coming up. Yeah. And uh, I said to him, I said, you know, I'll be honest with you. Um, about a year and a half ago, I really focused on if I'm not – 
vested in something, I'm going to say no every time. Unless I'm 100% like this is what I want to do, it's yeah. a no. And that's been a big part of my maturity level is how it, it's hard to say no to people. It really mm-hmm. is. Yeah. And we, so we had this conversation for like 20, 30 seconds. I explained it to him. I said, you know, maybe, maybe later on down the road, if, if, if something happens, I'll, I'd love to catch up with them. But, you know, right now, I don't think so. Well, then he says, well, um, you know, we still have about 15, 20 minutes. Do you want me to get him on the line now? We can just do a, do a call right now, the three of us. And I'm, and I'm kind of take a step back and I'm like, does he, am I not being clear with no. the way that I'm explaining this? And I said, hey, man, listen, just shoot me an email with his contact and, you know, we'll, uh, if, if something there. changes, we'll go from there. But I, right now, man, I got a lot going on. And uh, so then he starts texting me. We finish and he texts me and he says, hey, I've connected, huh, I've connected this guy to this, this, yeah. uh, this, this uh, text chain. I'll bleep it. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, just let us know what day next week works. And here's where that hard sell starts to come. Like, wait a second. I just said that I'll get in touch with you. Like, yeah. I, I'm in control of this. I, I, I got yeah. it. And now he's saying, well, you let me know a day and time next week. And I'm like, uh, just shoot me his contact. Well, then he says, hey, he's also got some time Saturday. You want to jump on Saturday? And finally I said, look, man. I said, guys, I told you. <laughs> I'm not interested right now. I'm I'm super busy. Yeah. Let's just let's let's end this back and forth. I'm not going to set anything up. And and it puts you in a position to where when you when you when you push this hard sale, it makes it very hard to build a relationship that's going to last after the one sale that you have cuz here's what's going to happen. Let's say I did do it. Yeah. And 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 I was and I wasn't I wasn't um what's the word I'm looking for? Um I wasn't strong enough to say no, and I finally broke down and said yes. Mm -hmm. Immediately, I'm going to regret it. I'm going to dread that call because I don't want to do it. I don't want to be there. And now I'm mad that this guy pushed me into this position Mm -hmm. if I did it. Now, I didn't do it. And and it just, it actually made me angry. So now I'm like, listen, I don't even care if this podcast goes live. Now I know who you really are, what you guys are about. I'm not an idiot. This isn't my first two months doing this. Yeah. And now you push me in a, in a situation to where I don't want anything to do with anything you're affiliated with. So that's, the, that's what I think is the biggest downfall of trying to be aggressive with the way that you sell something. Uh, or they push so hard that it annoyed the crap out of you. When you. If you do need that kind of help later on, you're going to reach out to a different person. hundred percent. You're like, I remember that guy. You might remember it, but you're like, I don't want his help. God, he was pushing. Yep. And, I'll and go somewhere else. So you've set yourself on this path of you're a one and done. You're going to get me for one, but I'll never do it again. And yeah. I probably won't stay with it because I've got this bad taste in my mouth. Even if it's a great call that I yeah. have, I, I automatically will have this no kind of like yeah. negative experience. And if I don't do it, you're certainly not going to get a repeat person to come back yep. and we see this in sales on the on, on the membership side there's uh there's a lot of companies out there that were built on this kind of this hard sale like i'm gonna close you the first time you come no into the gym what. and i'm not talking about crossfit gym i'm talking about any yeah. any gym yeah. it can be a uh, a fitness connection it can be a golds whatever the goal is when you sit down in that seat they're not leaving unless they have an ACH form on you. That's yeah. their goal. And what happens is most people, and this is what I've seen from 13 years of doing this, most people aren't going to pull the trigger right away. And here's why. It used to be when Vitality first opened 13 years ago, we were the only show in town. Mm-hmm. If you wanted a CrossFit gym, it was us. So yeah. when you came to us, there wasn't this – you know, you laundry list it. of, uh, yeah, I never, I was terrible at selling it. I was terrible at selling yeah. it. They're like, I need CrossFit. Oh, they're the ones. I still, I, I, I'm mortified at the fact that, uh, one of the funniest stories, not it's, 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 it's embarrassing for me, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you from, uh, Andrew Drucker, uh, who was one of our first members and then he moved to Charleston. Great guy, great family. He tells this story and I, and I get mad at him every time because he gets me laughing. <laughs> 
but he said, man, I came into the gym. I was kind of nervous. Just wanted to come talk to somebody. And I walked up the stairs at Old Vitality, walk up the stairs. And I had just finished working out, had my shirt off. I'm sweating profusely, chalk all over the place. (laughs) And I'm, and I'm just crunching on some food. Like he said, I was just had like a (laughs) huge meal in front of me on the thing. And he literally sat down. I got lettuce hanging off my mouth, <laughs> sweating all over the paperwork that we're filling out, yeah. sweating on it as we're filling it out, you know? And he's like, dude, you were terrible, but that's what I, I, I loved it. He's like, yeah. I, 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 my mind was already made up. Yeah, I was like, I want to do and, that. <laughs> but that's, it's funny because that's how I used to, I just didn't, I, I wasn't smart enough that first year. I didn't understand. But the, the reason I got away with that was because there was no other competition. I mean, there was other gyms, but not CrossFit. Yeah. So if you came and you wanted to do CrossFit, That's you were you coming to Vitality. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, 13 years later, not to mention the social media aspect oh, of yeah. this, and this goes for any industry, if you come to, to Vitality, you're finding six, eight, ten other options that you can do. Yeah. If so, I live in, in a certain area and I Google CrossFit gyms near me or gyms near me, oh, it's everywhere. two that pop up. Yep. You're going to have a thing that you scroll down that says click for more. more you got below. F45. They're going to be got, everywhere. You're going to be like, uh, God, what do I do? Eat the Frog. You got Orange Theory. You got Burn. You got the, the what's the other one that's right up there? Uh, Just about to open up. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's got initials IS, or something. IS, ISI. ISI or something. There's, there's everything. And so what happens is I, I took the approach, I want you to go to try other places mm-hmm. because I'm not afraid of comparing us to somebody else. I'm, I'm fine with that because I don't think – I don't think there is a facility like us. However, there's a facility that's different than us. Yeah. There's a facility that delivers a different experience, and that's okay. This vitality is not for everybody. And, and the mistake that I made in the beginning was thinking that this was the end-all, be-all. Everybody that comes in here should do it. Should. Do I think everybody could benefit from what we're doing? Absolutely. But I also think people can benefit from a lot of other programs that are out there. So the shift for me, the paradigm shift was – let them go. Let them try a class. Let them see what the experience is. Yeah. If we do what we're supposed to do, if we provide the culture and community that we've created here and we show that and it's, it, and, and we just let them experience it and they go somewhere else and they like something else better, great, because what's going to happen? If, if they didn't love it here, yeah. they're going to last 60 days, they're 90 days, and they're going to go find someplace else. Yeah. But when they go to Vitality, then they go to three other places and they come back and they're like, man, listen... We really liked it. Cool. This it's awesome. If I try and hard sell everybody that comes in here, and Nate is like really pushy, and he doesn't want you to try a class, he doesn't want you to go home and talk to your wife yeah. about it. Then great, you're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna get sold. You're gonna leave here with a bad taste in your mouth. You're gonna go home and tell your wife, hey, We're remember born. that conversation <laughs> that we had, and you and you told me to just get some information to yeah. come and we'll talk about it. <laughs> We're going tomorrow at 4. We're going tomorrow at 4 p.m. <laughs> yeah. She's mad Nate now. was great. She's mad, and she's and, and they last 30 days, and they're yeah. out. So it just doesn't make sense. And and the reality is... Somebody either wants to do something or they don't, usually. We like can't, it's, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. You just, yeah, you just like, if they want to do something, they'll do it. You can show them, give them the experience, but you can't just make them do that. And you can't... God, you can't. And the problem is, is there's enough people, and there's nothing against these type of people. I'm I'm okay with, you know, people that are that that haven't practiced saying no enough, and they get put in that position, and they and they kind of stress out a little bit, and they just kind of um, go with whatever whoever's selling them with yeah. it, you know. And my wife will do this at times, where I really get on her sometimes when. Someone sells something to her and she doesn't and she doesn't clarify the price. Yeah. And she just she she makes a buying decision without even asking what the price is. Not that she's spending a ton of money yeah. on something, but it's just a simple fact like, hey, what what, what is that? What 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 does it cost? Oh, I don't know. Well, wait a second here. How much sense does that make? But <laughs> yeah. I think some of the reason is is she's a little uncomfortable with having that conversation of like, hey, how much does this cost? Yeah. And and the reality is Almost every single person that comes in here, 
ask if we have specials or discounts, not because they're not willing to pay. It's just this is what you ask. Yeah, like, if you don't ask, you don't know. You don't know. And, it's, and, and, if you, and, and if you don't ask, let's say, we do, let's say we are a gym. We've never done this before, but let's say we ran a special where it was, hey, uh, your first month is half off. And someone comes in and they're going through the whole process and they don't ask about it and we give them the paperwork and it's, we, we charge them full price. They don't say yeah. anything. You're not going to stop them and say, oh, hey, remember. Remember, this one's half. This one's half. You yeah, know, you don't tell them. That. I'll give you $80 back. <laughs> yeah. No, most businesses aren't going to do that. Uh, so I think there's just some people that are uncomfortable talking about that money part of it. And it, it is an uncomfortable thing. And I think, you know, if we got Nate in here, Nate's been doing sales for me for, oh, gosh, four or five years. And he's really really good at it and why is he good at it because people can relate you to him. him well i did teach him i did teach him <laughs> he's like what uh but uh it's also a lot tougher to sell when it's not yours oh i'm yeah. always going to be better at it than nate no matter how long he does it it's your house because it's mine yeah. and, and it's not because i'm i'm better at the process it's because when you walk in you're going to have a different you're going to have a different interaction in your mind if you're talking to Nate or you're talking to the owner. Yeah. That's just the way it is. And that's there's nothing he can do. He's really really good, but that's another layer that he had to he had to kind of work through. And I think he was, people would be more comfortable talking to him than the owner. I don't know. I would maybe. Dis- I I think I Depends disagree on the person. a little bit just because I think people like going straight to the source, you yeah. know. Well, you don't walk into like it depends on the place. Like I wouldn't walk into the a Planet Fitness, be like, who owns this place? Yeah. Who owns this building? But if you did. Just behind the desk, I know they're working. But if you did, let's say you did sit down and it was the owner. Yeah. I think it'd be a different, you'd kind of have a different uh, approach. Like, like he made time for me. Wait a minute. He, yeah. He cares. So I think that's a, it's a tough thing. And you throw on top of that, the age thing that Agnew had to All work right, through. Yeah. So I think that really helped him to take an approach to where he didn't want to get pushy with people because he wanted to build this relationship with them. And for the most part, uh, that's that's why people buy. They buy yeah. because of the relationship. They don't buy because 100% because of the product. They buy because of the relationship mm-hmm. of who they're buying it from or what the company stands for, especially now. when you When you look at the market research now, people are making buying decisions so much heavier based on what their brand stands for yeah. than anything else, you know. Um, so it, I, I think that you're you're doing a huge disservice if you're not proactively making sure that your salespeople aren't getting to this pushy pot. And here's another pushy part about it: if you're working commissions. Mm-hmm. You're going to be pushy. Oh, yeah, be so that's yeah. a, that comes down to the owner. The owner sets that culture. If you set it to where, you know, it's a very sell, little salary. Yeah, and it's more commission based. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna raise up a bunch of wolves, and that's not the way you want to do this. Um, and I can't honestly, I can't think of any industry where it makes sense to do this hard sale, this aggressive uh, kind of. Uh, overbearing approach. Stocks? I, I can't think of it. <laughs> Stock market? I don't know. Maybe. 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 So you got to do it quick. You got. Yeah. I don't know. Other than that, like a regular. But I even could, then, I could say the same thing. You force uh, me to buy. I think, and it crashes. I think the 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 whole stockbroker thing, where you have individual people um, managing a, a, a portfolio for you yeah. of stocks, is the biggest racket on planet earth i won't get into it but i'm telling you now maybe we'll do a podcast on it and and you can argue with me about it but vanguard or something similar to that where you can manage your own index funds or whatever self-manage that is the only way 99 percent of us should be doing that and let's say you do you're that one percent that has a stockbroker. Mm-hmm. you have somebody that you're calling up saying hey Buy me some Target, okay? <laughs> okay, whatever. But, and he's pushy with you. That works when you're winning. Yeah. But guess what? If you don't, if now you're pushing something, now I can see that flipping and being like, wait a second, you're the one that talked me into this. You oh, told yeah. me you that I should go buy that. Yeah. yeah. Instead of saying, hey, man, 
I think, here's what I would recommend. You know, and that's how we've always approached it on the fitness side is, hey, guys, when people walk in, let's make them a recommendation. Let's yeah. make them a fitness prescription that fits what they're looking for. Mm-hmm. And then it's up to them. And, you know, and Jess battles this a lot on the nutrition side where people will come to her and she'll invest all this time and they just won't stick with it. No amount of hard selling that would ever work. And she is as far from a hard seller as you're ever going to get. She is on the other end of the spectrum. You know, people will actually have to be like, I'm sure that these conversations that she has with people, it is 100% them saying, yeah, yeah, I think, and she's like, "Well, you know, it's up to you, you know, it, you know, because she's just she knows she doesn't have to, yeah, and that's just not the way she's wired, and because of that, people will innately trust that type of person because they don't feel like they're pushing and in, pushed into anything, and she has a hard enough time with retention without hard selling. Imagine, yeah. you know, convincing someone to change to the way you it. eat and do yeah. all this stuff; they're gonna flake in two weeks. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very convinced that there's no industry to where this, uh, makes sense in the Marine Corps. When we did recruiting, they were huge on closing. It was a big part of it. And this was back in, I don't know, this was 15, 16 years ago. Uh, on the enlisted side, man, you walk into an enlisted recruiting office, you better know exactly what you're doing. Not that these guys are 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 gonna make make you do bad things, but if you walk in and you are on the fence of what you're gonna do, mm-hmm. I can promise you. Philip Lewis walks into a recruiting office and says, "Yeah, I think you know, I think this is something." You are guaranteed walking out of there with a ship date, and you're going to boot camp within the next ninety they days. Tell me I wasn't allowed. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Those guys are amazing at closing yeah now on the officer side we had a different you know we took it completely to the other side where we made it almost it was gunny scott and i'm now match sergeant scott he's still in the marine corps that's how that's how long that's how old we're all getting he gets out in two years i think he hits 25 or 30 Dang. so he's doing amazing things but him and i uh we were the number one recruiting office in the country nobody did it better there were 40 some stations nobody touched us and you know why because we flipped it on its head and we said you know what we said, let's make them want to join. Let's make them beg us to be a part of this. So all we do, we'd go to the we'd go to these uh, universities like Clemson, UNCC, Western Carolina, and we'd work out. We'd put our officer uh, recruiting stuff on, and me and Gunny would get it, <laughs> digging in there, sweating. No, oh, yeah. You know, Gunny and Gunny's a chiseled machine, <laughs> and. Uh, People would come up and they'd say, "Hey, what's what's this all up? You know, you guys are recruiters." And Gunny was the greatest. He'd be like, "Hey, we're we're in the middle of this. You come back. We'll meet <laughs> you. At, we'll meet you at the you know some auditorium at 6 p.m. And we had, at the end of our workout, we'd shower up, change back into our uniforms, and go over at 6 p.m. or wherever it was. There'd be a bunch of people, and over there'd there. be four or five <laughs> people there. And then Gunny would make them explain to him why they were qualified, and it completely flipped." The script. It's like they wanted to get in the secret gang. The yeah. Secret, yeah, like the, yeah. And then the best thing was after they, Gunny said, well, okay, you know, you've passed initial screening. Come back tomorrow. If you survive the workout with <laughs> Captain and I, then, then, you, then we'll go we'll to the next step. And we would put these guys through. Think, Crowder will tell you. We will put that. It was, <laughs> it was pouring down rain when Crowder came in to do his interview. And Gunny said, hey, uh, okay. I think you're initially what we're looking for. Uh, Captain's going to put you through a workout, and if you survive, then, you know, whatever. So I remember it was a torrential downpour. It was thunderstorms, lightning, everything. And we had this crazy workout called No Mas, and it was like a bunch of calisthenics and push-ups and burpees and broad jumps. And it took about 25, 30 minutes. And it's like an Evo Fit class outside. Yeah, only. But... Yeah. And... uh <laughs> I remember we sent him out there in the thunderstorm. Just out in everything. And he was out there. It, it's mud puddles. Lightning He's, everywhere. Oh, every, yeah. It's a, uh, it was illegal on every – it was crazy. <laughs> We're lucky to be alive. Lucky to be not in jail. And he goes through this whole thing. 30 minutes later, comes in just covered. We, Gunny wouldn't let him back in the office. <laughs> he had to stand out in front of the door. We left him outside and said, hey, 
All right, we'll talk. We'll talk tomorrow. You did. You did okay. You know, we'll, hey, we'll be in touch. Keys. Yeah. Crazy man. And that's what we used to do. And 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 we should do that on a Saturday. Recreate it, and me, you, and some of the coaches go outside and do it out back. Up people the hill. loved it, man. <laughs> they they ate it up because they thought they were, they thought they were trying out. But that's yeah. how it should be. If you've got a product they that want to be in it. If you've got a product that you believe in, I believe in Vitality Fitness 100%, then I, I, can, I can deliver this in a different way. I know that the product's good. Yeah. You just got to taste it. Now, if you don't believe in your product, then you better be a hard-selling son yeah. of a gun because you know as soon as they leave and see anybody else's deal, they're picking someone else. Yeah. You know, I wasn't afraid. We weren't afraid. Nothing against the Air Force. We love our airmen. Nothing against the Navy. We love our seamen. Nothing against the Army. We love those guys. But there, it's a different level when you come into the Marine Corps recruiting place. It was People knew it. Everybody yeah. knew it. It was just different. So go talk to them. Yeah, they'll, they'll promise you everything. I ain't promising you nothing. Yeah. You know, you might not even make it through 10 weeks of OCS. That's what, you know. I, you probably never make it. Now, what I would do, I'd pay a decent amount of money to send you to officer candidate school right now. I would go. I know. And, and I, I, think, would go. I, think you'd, I think you'd make it. I think you'd make it. Why do it. you say think? Because What's the issue? I'd send you in January when it was cold. That's not nice. Cold. I don't know. I actually My perform pretty good. Cold. I actually perform better in the cold as long as I'm not wet. <laughs> I was telling, <laughs> uh, oh man, we are on a big time tangent. <laughs> I was like, telling uh, Laura, uh, little Henry's got his first cold, and oh boy, I was holding. I him touched him. It's a it's a baby cold. Still, I don't no, want a baby cold. It's a baby. Turns cold. into a man cold. No, no. <laughs> and she, maybe she I was, wouldn't make it. She was telling him. She's like. Pretty soon I'll stop taking your temperature, your rectal temperature. Oh, and gosh. The poor little guy. And I said, oh, man, Henry. <laughs> it's terrible. Poor dude. But I remember when it was cold at Officer Cannon School, we'd do these long runs or long uh, uh, marches, and people would be falling out because it was oh, so cold. And what they – Falling out because of the cold? It's free, you know, It was just freezing cold. Freak. It was cold. Cold. And it was long. It was lot, you know. Just, just and like, what I'm they out. were doing to fix this, guess what they did to fix it? If you fell out, you were getting your rectal temperature taken right there on the spot because of hypothermia. Right there. What? Yep. And guess what it did? Nobody dropped Ain't out. Ain't nobody <laughs> dropping out. It was, oh, no. I it might was take genius. The, I might take the old thermometer. That's, that's <laughs> I what might the, take it. That's what they were thinking. They're like, man, I can have a warm two-hour ride back to the barracks, but I got to have my rectal temperature taken in front of the entire company. I'll make it a little bit longer. Oh, man. But, but before that, people just falling out, <laughs> falling out left and right. It was great, man. And no, Can you make I a... never once had my temperature taken in my rectum. Ah, first of all, I think we should try that. Just see if there's a difference in that in your mouth. <laughs> of course then, there is. What two different thermometers, obviously. <laughs> and <laughs> I think you should make a call to your boy that's still in the Marines and just send me there for 10 weeks. Oh, Master Sergeant Scott, man. Just make a pull, like give, pull some strings, let me in there for 10 weeks. I'll come back a changed man. It would be the most amazing vlog in the history <laughs> Tell of Tell me I wear a GoPro and I really like But if I make it, I'm in it. Part-time. That's what we'll go sometime. No, we'd have to tell them that if you make it, you're, you're going to decline your commission. That's the, the, you know what the Marine Corps is? The what do you mean decline it after I made it through all that? I know. I skipped. I got my rectal temperature taken. <laughs> do you <laughs> know that the Marine Corps is the only officer program that allows you to decline your commission? So if you go through 10 weeks of OCS and you make it, and this happened. Uh, two people in our, our company did it. They decided that they weren't going to accept their commission. They walked away. Wow. So, I don't know. After 10 weeks of that? Crazy. Running and freezing? Couldn't imagine it. I just said, give it to me, and I'll take that, guys, that didn't <laughs> yeah. want it. Yeah. So, but, but my whole point of this, my whole point of this tangent is, I'm going to OCS. If you don't believe in what you're selling, then man, try, sell something different. Sell and something you believe have, in. Somebody told me the other day, if you're having a hard time saying yes to something, the answer is no. Ah, uh, yes. If if you don't think to yourself when I say to you, if I have to think about saying yes, it's probably no. Hey, What's do you want to go see uh, Top Gun Two? If yes. you're not 100%, like, dude, I'm excited. Heck yeah. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. It's uh, a no. I don't know. It's a it's no. no. Just don't. And unfortunately for me, there's a lot of things that I say no to because I just, man, I'm a creature of habit. I like my. You're structured. My structure. I like the way Except that I am. Except for the Carolina Duke game, you're staying up Saturday night watching it. And there's 0% chance that I'll do that. Like, it's just, you know, <laughs> there's no, if, if Nate said to me, hey, man, 
let's go to this crazy bar and there's be a ton of people there and it'll I be really so much want fun. You to go. I'd be like, bro, I think it'll be a blast for you, but it's a no, man. <laughs> you know. Um, so that's just me. I'm just that. But I think you are 100 percent right in saying that that needs to be something that you focus on, and that will make the 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 buying process even easier. Yeah. Because again. If you are going to buy a car and you're a hundred percent, you hey, want that car. This is the per, this is the annual whatever percentage. Yep. This is the payment. This it's is the this. exact car you want. Yes. Cool. But if they show you all that and you're like, oh, I don't. Just the say answer's no. no. Just say it. Yep. The answer is <laughs> no. no. Yeah. Yep. So guys, I you know, I think that a lot of what we talk about, it comes from experience. It comes from making these mistakes. Hopefully, I mean, I can get out here and me and Philip can go back and forth on, you know. Rectal temperatures. Rectal temperatures. But <laughs> the reality is. I'm start, this is how I'm going to start the podcast. I think this is what the conversation we need to have is actual real world things that you're going to have. Because there's always going to be the guy that uh, isn't confident and wants to hard sell you because he's not confident in the product he's selling. And there's a lot of products out there. Turn on your TV, every infomercial. You know, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to constantly get you to buy or something you can be really confident in it and believe in it and use it and love it to death and still push it so much yeah, that, that you, you turn make somebody away. else hate it yes <laughs> so yes. just let them taste it and yeah. just if they like it they like it yeah i agree if if philip tastes a uh i love photography and videography do you like wine hmm. i hate wine oh. i've never been a wine oh, drinker dang. but let's say you were okay let's say you I'm were of course light drinker natural light drinker Okay, yeah. if you're if if I give you a glass of wine and say, "Hey, taste this," and it doesn't taste good, any amount of me convincing you to buy that <laughs> bottle of wine shouldn't work. Yeah. However, if you taste the wine and you're like, "Wow, that's really good," I don't have to push it on you. Yeah. If you threaten me or something, I might buy it, but yeah. I'm not gonna drink it when unless you're around. But if you love it, you're gonna. It's an easy sell. It's an easy sell. Don't overthink it. Yeah. Uh, so, guys, I hope this helps. We went a little longer today. Uh, we had a couple uh, little tangent stories that I think will be enjoyable to some of our listeners. We had a lot of rectal temperature talk. I, I, I apologize. Uh, no, that. that's fine. We're starting the next podcast with taking your rectal temperature. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> if I had to guess, it's over 100. <laughs> that's from being underneath you and jujitsu. <laughs> All right, guys, until next time, this is the Built by Vitality podcast.